When you got into your car this morning to drive to work, you probably made a thousand little decisions about how to drive. Do you make that left turn? Do you pass that car on the side? Do you make a right on red? How did you make your decision? Join us as we speak with Johannes Himmelreich of Syracuse University about how these questions are ultimately decided when it comes to self-driving cars and the ethics of technology. It's an overused phrase, but self-driving cars in this case change everything. So whereas today many people make their choices unconsciously, we'll have one algorithm or a few algorithms making those choices for everyone. And we should really think about this because of course you care about how your taxi driver drives you around. But now imagine there's only one taxi driver that drives everyone around. And that's the kind of situation we'll have with self-driving cars. And the question is, how should we approach the driving style of our taxi driver? We really need to move this debate forward. The two approaches that we've had, the social sciences and moral philosophy, both have their place, but they're both ultimately lacking. To supplement these approaches, we should turn to political philosophy. Political philosophy contributes three important concerns to our conceptual toolkit. And I think each of those concerns needs to get more attention to the debate. The first one is the idea of reasonable pluralism. Whereas moral philosophy starts from the perspective of the individual, political philosophy starts from the perspective of us as a group. Moral philosophy asks, what is the right thing for me to do? Whereas political philosophy asks, what is the right thing for us to do? How do we get along as a community? And these are two very different perspectives. Unfortunately, the debate on self-driving cars focused on the perspective of moral philosophy. You can see this in the debate of so-called trolley cases. So when a car has to make a, a drastic choice between killing one or killing five, or killing one to the left or killing one to the right. Here the question is, what's the right thing to do? And I think that's actually the wrong question to ask. We should ask, how should the car decide in a way that we can all live together with that policy? So we're not looking for the right decision, we should be looking for the right policy. A second consideration that political philosophy contributes is the idea of human agency and autonomy. Even if we all agreed on what the morally right thing is, that doesn't mean we should legislate and regulate for that. Because we value that people make choices and we value that people can make mistakes, that people can choose for themselves. And that's not something that we've paid much respect to in the current debate. For example, should you be able to set the settings in your car, how the car drives? And if so, what exactly should that look like? and within what range should you be able to set the driving parameters. And these are considerations that are highlighted by the idea of human agency and autonomy. And a third consideration that political philosophy brings to the table is the idea of legitimacy. Here the question is, who has the right to make a decision for all of us? And how does this decision that governs all of our lives come about? And that is a really important consideration. It's connected to the idea of power, it's connected to the idea of governance and accountability, and this is something we need to think about a lot, not only with self-driving cars, but also with how we govern technology in general in society. We need to turn to political philosophy to figure out what are the rules, the institutions, and the policies that work for all. To learn more, see Ethics of Technology Needs More Political Philosophy, a viewpoint in the January 2020 communications of the ACM.